for sure where I look at my watch and go okay how long's gone and how long's how long's left I won't pretend that you know I never do that yeah everyone does that whether yeah. you're going for a run or or you're you know doing some type of core workout or whatever you're doing you, you'll, you'll always reach a point where you go you know is it over lovely technique is there a technique to running yeah. you look like you're bouncing yeah there's, there's like two controls you know like you play a computer game and you've got your your controls you've yeah got your, I'm good about running. <laughs> Pain. Uh, we're running around two minutes now, aren't we? Yeah. How does it feel like? It's always going to feel miserable for the first five minutes. Is that it? Most of the time. Say you're there and you're trying to think and you're in pain now because yeah. say today we went out there and I haven't ran for six, maybe a year, but I, I don't know how long. Um, and the pain kicks in. Now, if I was trying to think, force myself, do you actually, there has to be a little bit of force to make that habit happen, you know? I have to remind myself, and you know, I do, but it's like a lot of things, 
you get better at it. You can get better at gratitude. Mm. Um, I I noticed that when I wasn't running, uh, I wasn't spending that time being being grateful. Yeah. So it was like a double whammy. I wasn't getting my fresh air. I wasn't getting my vitamin D. I wasn't getting that euphoric feeling after a run. I wasn't getting you know the cardio, and I wasn't getting this mental gratitude feeling that for me took anxiety and chaos and, and inverted it and turned it into switching the light on, being positive, figuring stuff out, not, not avoiding stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah. You weren't always running. No, you were always running. Late. Yeah. Late in life. Yeah, yeah. And, and I had a few, a few attempts at becoming a runner. Mm. And initially, I didn't want to be a runner. It's all about trying to have as low a heart rate as you can for as high a speed as you can for as long as you can. So breathing is massive. So I joined a running club and I'm running with these guys and you know I'm saying to them, so what are you training for? And he goes, what do you mean? I says, well, you know, what, what are you training for? And he goes, well, I'm not really training for anything at the moment. And I goes, okay. And I couldn't get that. I couldn't get the fact that he was running because he was a runner. Mm-hmm. Not because he was training. Not because I guess there's, there's a clear distinction. You're On one hand, you're maybe a campaignist or you know a journey person or you're, you're an event an eventist <laughs> yeah and on the other hand you've you've taken running has become it's become part of your of your persona of your day-to-day you know that you are a runner and i think it just happens uh, gradually so right now all i'm thinking about is stopping yeah. um it kind of reminds me of uh studying and research mm. you know who when they're doing their leaving cert or their junior cert, you know, would think, oh, well, I think I'm going to study for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're studying because you have an exam. Yeah. Because you're going to be measured and because you've signed up for this, well, you've been signed up for this exam and you have to do it in the start and the middle and an end. Um, but somewhere along the way, you and we all, you know, at our age, enjoy researching. Mm-hmm. We go on to, we go on, we read on, on Google and we, we go on, we, we find a topic whiskey or samurai swords and we want to know more about it yeah like when did you know when when did that happen when did you start learning and researching for fun i wonder is there a parallel there um, no there, there, yeah, i think it's absolutely lovely way to look at it because then it's not uh, it's not about trying to get somewhere almost it's about discovering what joy running getting your body moving and limbering again yeah like the, I, the, the, the mental health benefits of, um, and everybody talks about mental health, yeah. um, but there are these days, but um, in some ways, like you said, there's times when it's kind of like the idea of the cold shower as well. It's impossible to go, to begin a run in a certain mood and come back with that same mood feeling. Mm-hmm. You, however it is you're feeling, if you go running for 5K, yeah. it's very hard to remain fucked off or yeah. the, the problem has not almost resolved itself yeah. what, what do you think of that oh yeah definitely definitely i mean you know when when i when i go running there might be a handful of things that are in my head you mm. know work stuff or other items that i've kind of reached an impasse and i don't know exactly how to get it and i've probably blocked it and i've i've put it on a long finger i've put it on to do i'm out there running and it's like a light switched on mm. and I might be you know I'm out with nature the fresh air I've got a feeling of freedom and a feeling of control as well mm. and that that combination between freedom and control uh, for me just gives me that mental safe place that I can go okay I'm ready to figure that out now I'm gonna put that from the shit box onto the stage and I've quick look at it and go yeah that's exactly what I need to do I'm just going to ring that person and I'm going to do that I'm going to take that I'm going to put that over there and I come back and my three issues my three little demon-y tasks that I've been shying away from I've got solutions for but um you're not just a casual runner though you have um ran for Ireland um uh, I'll say I know you'd be way too humble to mention anything like that do you know what I mean 
Um, but uh, you have run. How did you go from starting again, or starting a little bit later in life, to uh, running for your country? Okay, so um, I'll try. I'll try and do a whistle stop on it. Um, so probably first major running event uh, was New York Marathon two thousand, mm-hmm. but it was pure fun runner campaign. I was doing it for social reasons. I was doing it for charity reasons. It was for uh, Crumlin Children's Hospital in Dublin. It was for social reasons because I really enjoyed the company of the people I was doing it with, mm. and got to meet Eamon Coughlin and we learned some really interesting things about running from him. Yeah, to run with him in Central Park. Yeah. Uh, so there was wins everywhere. Yeah, it was, it was and you got to be in New York. And I got to be in New York. Yeah, yeah. And New York Marathon is absolutely amazing. All oh, right. Three million people watching it. Um, one million people on the last mile as you go down Fifth Avenue in Central Park. It's unbelievable. Oh, right, if yeah. you were, if you were dying. Like as in, you were really beat. You'd hit the wall. You would still sail home. Those people, those women, women people, would carry you to the finish line. Yeah, I think I'm getting those. It, it puts um, mm. hairs in the back of my head just thinking. I'm actually getting those hairs. Yeah, because yeah. I know, th- I know what those last couple of k of uh, yeah. a marathon are like. And when you're up in the sticks of Connemara, you don't get that. You don't get that away. Of, oh, we might get a farmer grunting at you, but one million stones. Yeah, one million, one, sheep. Million, one million sheep and stones, <laughs> and that west wind, yeah, baiting well, yeah. your face, your yeah. face off you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, so look, I, I did that marathon, and it was, you know, I was happy just to finish it. Mm. It was great. It was for charity, and then fast forward to uh, moving to Galway, um, joined a, you know, joined a, um, a running club, and then I had a had a car accident, a uh, pretty bad car accident. It was a head-on collision with a Land Cruiser, um, with, uh, you know, um, 100 kilometers an hour. Fuck, what? My car was destroyed. My car wasn't a Land Cruiser. It was the Ford Mondeo. Um, and I was told not to run for, for about a year because mm-hmm. um, I had severe whiplash. Um, so, you know, any type of, any type of kind of uh, impact wouldn't be good. Mm-hmm. You know, I needed to, needed a year to live. So, I was I wasn't a competitive runner at the time. Anyway, I was this campaign runner, and I always had this. But I always had this belief that I could be really good if I did train. Mm-hmm. If I did train like these these runners in, in clubs, but I didn't feel like it, and I didn't have to, and didn't want to. You know, it was this is yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was just I had this kind of cockiness, but I, I had this um, I suppose enduring self belief for no reason, mm-hmm. um, which actually became really handy. It became the thing I needed. To go all the w- to go all the way in, in my ability starting late in life yeah. to go to, to be on the Irish cross country masters team and to go to, to the world mm. championships for over thirty five in fifteen hundred meters, I needed that enduring self belief and I got it from my mother, who mm. I grew up hearing stories about her being in the world championships in cycling. Okay. And also my grandfather Desmond Troy who qualified for the Olympics in nineteen uh, thirty two in Los Angeles Olympics in cycling. He was he was formidable in cycling. Yeah. My mother was 10 years, no one close to her as yeah, a cyclist in Ireland. We used to bring in uh, cyclists from uh, around Europe to, to race against her in a velodrome. Yeah. Um, it's entry, it doesn't exist anymore. But um, so I had this enduring self belief, and, um, and, and, and I, but I, I dabbled with the running, but then it was taken away from me. It was taken away from me because of the car crash. Yeah, and that's how I knew that it meant something to me. Because I always treated it with a little bit of disrespect. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go couch to marathon six months, you know, and and the, and the le- almost the least amount of training I did, I was proud of myself. Right. And, and I felt that that was kind of, it was it was disrespect to my opportunity, but it was also, you know, it, it ended up being painful. You know, you go out to a marathon and you're you're not properly conditioned or you're not properly trained, and it's gonna hurt. Yeah. And sometimes lasting, you know, lasting damage. But uh, it was taking away, so I had I had time to think about it. And during that period, during that you know um, 10, 10, 12 months, I said to myself, if I have the privilege, if I have the, if I if I am able to return to training, I'm either not going to do it, or I'm going to do it all the way. Right. I'm going to do it all of the way, because now I know that na- now for for once in my life, it's been taken away. And I realized that this isn't, 
it's like you don't have to run you get to run mm. you don't you know and I was like I wasn't that young I was like you know 30 it was, it was uh, 2007 so I was about um, you know 30 33 34 so it wasn't like I was going to go to the Olympics or anything like that what I mean by go all the way is that I would actually see if I could reach my potential in running yeah you know I would see can I go under 20 minutes mm. for 5k because I always said oh, I could go under 20 minutes but I never did it mm. came close but like why was I saying I could do something that I never did yeah yeah so, okay. so I, I made that decision that if I could go back to training that I would just go I would go and give it a, I would get off you know, get off there's something quite powerful somehow when that kind of when that happens that commitment uh, how how would you get started I kind of like the analogy of well how do you get interested in samurai swords or how I mean, yeah. whiskey, let's just say, is an easier yeah, hobby yeah. to get interested yeah, in. Yeah. Because, um, but it, a, a, um, running, yeah, what, what is your feeling? How do you, if, you, if you're sitting at home and you've been thinking about yeah. going running, you've heard about people going running, and there's an app first, there's every sort of a thing yeah. out there. Yeah. What's, what would you recommend? Okay, so let's say that you want to get into, you just want to get into running. Yeah. And right now, it's an interesting kind of you know era that we're in in the middle of you know in, in covid yeah there is no races so you're not training for anything yeah you're actually just doing you're running for fun you're running for for fitness you're running you're running okay so so you're not training for anything yeah you just want to go for a run um so i think the first thing is to try and make it as as pleasant as possible mm. so while running for most people particularly at the start and if you're new to it it is painful there's pain in the lungs there's physical pain in your in your legs there's pain in your feet the you, you know if you're very new to running you might have long toenails and you'll, you'll cut your you'll, you'll cut your <laughs> you'll cut your feet there's yeah. pain there you might get blisters you might get you might get you know your nipples might get shaved there's pain yeah. all, everywhere there's mental pain yeah um yeah the ligaments muscles everything okay so we've covered all the pain no but it's good like, <laughs> it's I mean, true, yeah. because there is that feeling like people i i know when i start running again i kind of everything goes out the window and it is like fight or flight stop or run yeah. like and it's kind of it's it needs to, i think you need to know it's to, what you're going that wanting to stop or all that pain is totally normal and that's why it's good to get a description i think of all the bits that's going on in your body yeah put put it out there and go right well how, how do i mitigate against some of these yeah. things so do i have to run you know uh during during dark and so i have to run really early in the morning late at night because mm -hmm. to me you know that's a pain you know yeah. and, and you know it's also a place where you can fall into potholes if you're out my my side of the world yeah or, or you know and you've extra gear you've got head torches you've all this you know so i said just try and declutter mm -hmm. try and I would describe it as trying to find your mountaintop. Mm. Find the zen, beautiful, you know, you know this. This like when you go on holidays, you go for a lovely run, you lie down on the beach. Mm. Can you do that at home? Can you figure that? Can you figure that out? Mm. Does it have to be? It doesn't have to be as as hardship. Yeah. Now the pain and all those things they're going to happen, but to balance that, to counter that, you know, no more than a half an hour to begin with. Mm. Run easy, run easy, run 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 so you could. Have a bit of a conversation, yeah. maybe five words at a time, not like this. Yeah, you know, <laughs> get the heart rate up. Yeah, if you have a heart rate monitor, stay in the green zone. Mm. That green zone for the likes of us is probably 140, 140, 135 to 140 beats per minute. Mm. Stay there, you'll get so fit. How you get fit, how you start out, is by starting the way you need to continue. So take the campaign out of it, take anything unsustainable out and go. Could I do this for six months? Well, if the answer is no, take it out. You know, don't run hard so you're wrecked for three days. Try and run. See if you can run every second day. Mm -hmm. you know, but listen to your body. Like different courses for different horses. You know, if you're feeling really bad, if your heart rate's going through the roof, stop. Walk. You know, enjoy it. Look around. Um, mm -hmm. You know, enjoy enjoy the walking part of it yeah. because. If you keep that up after four weeks, you won't be walking anymore. Maybe mm. you get a stitch in the side. Mm. Keep it up. You won't get stitches anymore. Mm. But you've got to go through. It's like a, a rite of passage. I mean, you were good enough to get a pedicure as well. Yeah. So. Barefoot running was, was a big thing. We all remember it. Um, the Vibrans and, and the book, Born to Run. Born to Run, yeah. It was a movement 
you know, and there was a lot of good stuff in that. But I think uh, the point was missed. Mm. So people, Vibrant jumped on it. You know, these shoe socks were sold. People were buying them, and they were doing road races, ten mile road races in these in these no support, no cushion, Vibrams. Um, you know, and, and and some of the people who did that, a lot of them, they weren't. They probably weren't competitive runners. They were runners actually that maybe weren't as conditioned. But they loved the idea of it. I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. And, and and some of those runners that that did that, they actually had you know maybe a little bit of extra weight on. Which is important when it comes to running. You can't really ignore that fact. Yeah. You know, um, if you go running ten miles in your bare feet on the concrete, and you're a couple of stone over your over your weight that maybe you were when you were nineteen, mm. right? Which is kind of your. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. Uh, what are you saying? <laughs> go on. Yeah. Yeah. If if you do that, well, <laughs> well we, we know what happened. People people got injured. People people got like stress fractures in their feet yeah they you know it was it was uh, it was all wrong well it does defeat uh, it does defeat the purpose in a way of barefoot running it's like touching something with a glove on it had this the benefit of this has to be surely the fact that you well a huge part of it is that your feet are actually on um, mother earth or on the ground on that cold be- I'm, I'm sure there must be something chemically about having a bare foot on the ground, on, on grass. Yeah. Because it does something to you. It definitely wakens up the bottom of your feet, which, you know, it's... It's, it's yeah. Uh, I've heard, I've heard, you know, that you can get electrolytes from, from the soil. And I've heard, even heard people saying that when you're gardening, ideally don't use gloves because there's, there's electrolytes in that soil that help you and help your immune system. Yeah. So it's clearly important at the moment. Mm. It really always is, um, but yeah, I mean, barefoot running, you know, needs to be in my view on the grass, maybe on the beach. Would you, um, would you recommend that I go out running, but like I'm not going to do my five k on um, my bare feet? No. Uh, you can, you can. I mean, what what I'd say is wean yourself into it. Think of it like, you know, if you were doing weight training, mm. and you go okay. I'm going to I'm going to do these weights. I'm going to do them twice a week, and I'm going to do the nine kg dumbbells, and I'm going to do my rows. And I'm, but you wouldn't you wouldn't just start doing that every day. No. Because you, you'd end up you know your muscles would go what the heck's going on here. You, when you barefoot run, you change the way you run. Mm. Uh, it's it's biomechanically different. So the way your foot hits the ground, in barefoot, is 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 really different to the way your foot hits the ground when you're running in runners, and because of that. Um, m- different muscles are engaged in different ways. So running in your bare feet means that your toes are hitting the ground. Your toes hitting the ground, um, your, your knee is bent, your, um, your ankle is bent, uh, and, and you've got a lot of, you, all the good things about this is that you've got a lot of different areas of shock absorption. But what it does do is it puts strain on your lower leg. So your lower calf and your Achilles, if you got it, listen out for that, Feel that? Do you feel a strain on your lower calf and Achilles? If so, back off. The more you know, the, the more kind of joyous or pleasant you can make this experience, mm. um, the more likely you are to continue it. Mm. And running is like a pipeline game. Mm. You've got to continue to do it. If you continue to do it, everything you've dreamed of and more will fall out. Mm. Whatever, whatever you dream that you think you could do in running. You know, take minutes and minutes off that if you can just find a sustainable way to run. Mm. Sustainable for most people, unless they're sadomasochists, is that I'm going to I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. This is going to be <laughs> the bucket of pain and poo is is less than the bucket of joy and endorphins and and self love. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, if you're if you're going out, you know, at night in the rain you know, maybe you have to do that, but do you have to do that, or could you could you find a could you find a little window when yeah. the sun comes out, lunchtime, you know, uh, or could you could you maybe cut that hill out for a few weeks yeah. and, and run somewhere flat on the grass just to just to kind of get off the ground, yeah, okay. to get that start up, that 
to get your base built, to get your foundation built, and then go, yeah. then go tackle the hills and go make it hard for yourself. Yeah, bring in the pain. Bring yeah, bring in the pain, then yeah, if you want. To. Yeah, but there is a way, um, and um, have you in that moment in time, day to day, I was pricking with the phone and uh, running. That's my excuse for stopping. But there we talked. Just is there, there is that feeling of uh, I want to stop. Right, we talked about it a little bit yeah. on the run. Yeah. But it's it it is a kind of a moment whereby you want to stop. Now I have found through my own experience of running is that that just needs to somehow be ignored, and because there's another side to that. Now if you're continuing to run, uh, that will reappear every twenty minutes almost. Yeah. But you kind of know that it will go quiet. The pain that you're looking at, that you're feeling, um, might not be real. And, wh and what I mean by that is, there's different types of pain. So loads of different types of pain. If you look down your watch, and, you, and this is like you find like a heart rate monitor, if you look at your watch, and you're in the green zone, or even if you're in the orange zone, and you're in pain, unless there's something going on there, like you, maybe you actually have a broken toe or a broken foot, we're just talking about if we're just talking about you know oh I don't want to do it kind of car sickness pain you know like yeah. kind of, uh, kind of yeah. just you know this is what this for me is the beauty of heart rate monitors because you can you can take you can start taking the subjectivity out of it and go no actually um I'm fine yeah I'm fine plus you get to get a gadget as well if you've you got, got a cool, cool it gadget. won't do the running for you but you still get no. to have a cool watch yeah. but like what I'm really interested in is that. 30, 20 to 30 minutes sweet spot. Oh, uh, 30. 30. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, can walk some of it, you can walk some of it, but it has to be 30. It has to be 30 minutes, yeah. right. But that sweet spot in a day, it's freely available. Yes. You can just go outside. And, yeah. I mean, you will be able to run. You don't need the grass. The grass is a huge, huge benefit if you can get to the grass. But yeah. otherwise, you can go out of the house, you don't need to pay a gym membership, you can go out any time of the day, yeah. but like you say, it is make it pleasurable, find, for me, I used to just try and find new routes, yeah. sometimes I'd run out of the house and not know what way I was going to go, because that would at least kind of keep it interesting, I'd kind of then, yeah. as part of the journey would be, oh, I go left here, or I go right, but what is your sense of the body, and the body being stuck, you know, this idea of being stuck behind a fucking desk, no. Looking at a computer, I don't think this thing. Have you thoughts on what like that the mechanism this body needs to be moving? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I got I got kind of first hand, uh, bitter experience of what happens when you don't, you know, uh, when you're sitting down too much. Mm. I was driving a lot. I was sitting down at work a lot. I was getting flights. Um, sitting, sitting, sitting. Yeah. And not doing enough core. Not doing enough maintenance, not doing mm. enough of the of the core kind of stretching, and the getting up every few minutes. If you don't that do, you know, if you don't do those things, uh, you effectively lose your body. Mm. You lose your body uh, in in a very kind of you know pretty dramatic and, and <laughs> you know it's, it's it's to the point where, like for me, um, I got this sciatic, and it it was basically like a psoas muscle that goes from your hip uh, well goes goes from your from your from your butt around your hip and into your groin and i was getting a pain there that was so bad that not only could i barely walk i could barely turn in my bed right so i went from being able to do everything to being able to do nothing overnight mm. and that that's down to too much sitting to your point and not enough lower back stretching lower back strengthening um, and, or even just getting up every 35 minutes okay, um, but, uh, any kind of thing that you don't use um, it just gets rusty and <coughs> useless yeah. Like, and so if you're not moving the body then you're more than likely you want to put on weight you're, uh, then moving becomes even harder yeah. and you put on more weight and um, which affects your breathing it affects it affects a tremendous amount of uh, things and then I think then the frustration of um, not being able to move in the same way mm -hmm. I don't know I mean I, I don't know enough about it all I, all I do know from a, is that when I'm running on a regular basis um, I feel better I feel I'm, I feel more able to run more yeah I feel my appetite to do shit 
around the house is bigger. It all seems to fit together. It's like the, you know, um, I might just actually put it in this that, I don't know when I'm going to launch this, but uh, I'm trying to have a load of them together. Mm. And like I said, I'm going to do 30 days of cold showers just, and I'm on day eight of that. And already I feel it's, it's just a phenomenal way to start the day. I know I've yeah. sold cold showers to you before, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's just phenomenal. Talk about you overcome a sort of a mental battle even before you've left the house stack. Like. Yeah. But the running thing as well, I'd like to, I might just introduce it again just to see, well, well what are the tangible feelings beyond getting the heart going and, and all the benefits um yeah so i'd be interested and by then you'll have your youtube channel anyway so i'll be able to yeah. you know yeah i'd be able to follow that and get motivation long but, uh, wolf long wolf running well i i think that's the perfect name like I, I do you heard it here first <laughs> <laughs> um i think that'd be i actually just think it'd be it'd be interesting to see um yeah, because I think it, it, uh, you have something to offer the the beginners, which I feel like a beginner again, and somebody who wants to take the running to the next level. A lot there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Nice one. <laughs>